The world of computer gaming is evolving at a colossal pace. The graphics are now getting so realistic that soon it'll be hard to tell that you're not looking at real-life footage. Millions of people around the globe play daily in massive virtual online worlds. And in Korea, computer gaming is a national sport. But let's stop for a moment and think about where it all started. We want to pay tribute to the pioneers of computer gaming, a company that cost just $500 to set up, but was soon grossing $2 billion a year. They were the first people to really show how technology could be used as entertainment. I'm talking, of course, about Atari. Started in 1972 by a couple of American computer programmers, Atari made Pong, the first commercially successful computer game. Its secret was its simplicity. The home version was a little brown console you plugged into your TV. But it only played Pong, and pretty soon, people started to want more games. The 2600 was hugely advanced, real cutting-edge stuff for 1979. But a console is only as good as the games you play on it. And to be a real success, what the 2600 needed was a killer application. A game so good and so addictive that everybody wanted to play it. And for the Atari 2600, the killer application was Space Invaders. In the early 80s, everybody was Star Wars crazy, so anything to do with space was hugely popular. All around the world, arcades were crammed full of people queuing to feed the slot machines to get their Space Invaders fix. But Atari's 2600 offered a way of enjoying the game at home. And in 1982, they sold 8 million consoles. Atari were America's fastest growing company, and the 2600 was on the top of every family's wish list. But then, in 1983, it all went wrong. As software writers tried to cash in on the success of the 2600, more and more games were hurriedly programmed and rushed to market. But people were getting fed up with the abundance of poor quality games. 1983 was also the year that home computers started to become popular. Parents would rather buy their kids something educational rather than just a pure games console. Atari's dominance was over and they never regained it. In 1989, they splattered back into life with the Atari Lynx, the first ever handheld games console with colour graphics. But the problem was the Nintendo Game Boy was half the price, half the size, and came with a phenomenon known as Tetris. So, no matter how good the Lynx was, it didn't stand a chance. And it disappeared without trace. In 1993, after nearly 20 years of computer game development and manufacturing, Atari pulled out of the hardware business. The company, as we knew it, no longer exists. 